Hey guys, I'm Zachary Gray, and today we are leaving Louisiana, and we are going to be going and filming with a skunk. Thankfully, it is legal to own a domestic skunk in Alabama, and also another, another 16 states. Oh my goodness, you are the sweetest little thing, and her name is Tink. And she is adorable. I want one. <laughs> Probably like, wow, you're not, you're not getting sprayed. The skunks are supposed to spray you. Well, domestic skunks are deglanded as a baby, and they, they cannot spray. Look at that. Look, he's digging. Or she's, she's digging for stuff. And see these? Oh, you're making noises. What'd you find? Did you get it? That's quite a sniffer you got. Oh, oh, did you find it? She smelled it. Nope, she lost it. Okay. <laughs> you are just adorable. And look at the claws. They're meant for digging. Little holes like that everywhere. And they're omnivorous, and that means that they're gonna be eating pretty, the skunks pretty much eat everything. They're gonna eat bugs, they're gonna scavenge for any meat that they can find. They're gonna eat fruit, they're gonna eat eggs, they're gonna eat insects, they could even eat a snake or a fish. And she's not super velvety or soft, she's actually got very coarse, very rough hair. Look at that, I never thought I'd touch a skunk's tail. <laughs> Feel it. It's a very weird feeling. You, you need to stop, stop eating. No, you're, you're far too chubby. You're far too chubby. No, look at the camera. Oh, granny. Little tink. You are so adorable. And this is a striped skunk. And there are two variants in America. There's a spotted skunk. What are you doing? There's a spotted and a striped skunk. And there's lots of different subspecies of both of those. But the striped skunk, it has such a wide range. They pretty much live in every state in the United States. And they spread to Mexico and Canada. got scared for a second and that was a defensive posture. I, that was my bad. I scared her a little bit. Stop. Stop, baby. Did you find it? Look. They're actually, I'm noticing they've got this little tiny ear. Tiny ears. Tiny ears. But they've got amazing hearing and amazing smell. But they actually have poor eyesight. They can only see things right in front of them. Everything far out for them is blurry. You are just digging holes everywhere, aren't you? Granny, I just want to take you home with me. Did you find it? No, that's my finger. It's not a worm. Look at that. Look at that little nose. She's like pretty much everywhere. She's sniffing everything out. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. She is so sweet and calm. Now they're actually, you would think if you look at a skunk, you're like, wow, this is like some kind of some kind of mink. Or it's, like, it's in the weasel family, so you'd think, oh yeah, this thing can climb up trees. This is probably one of the most least athletic of, in the least athletic animals in the weasel family. Basically, they completely rely on their on their stink, on their spraying. They completely rely on that. And they don't climb. They, they can dig very well, but they don't climb well at all. And they're actually pretty slow, maximum 10 miles an hour, and they will rarely go that. And this is normally how they'll be cru cruising around. Hello, baby. You look tired. You're running around too much. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness, it's so cute. Ah. Oh, my goodness. I can't stress how cute it is. I want one. I want one so much. You sniffing? Like okay, you sniffing? You you're sniffing so much? And they're built very short and stocky. They've got short little legs and a squat little body. And they're very chubby and they're like little bulldozers. They just go walk around like that all day, dig a little bit, find an egg or something on the ground and eat that. Get some water, and they're just. They just cruise around like that all day, so they completely rely on their stink as a self-defense. Now, 
they don't have a not, lot of natural predators because of their self-defense. A coyote, if a coyote comes at them, they're going to get sprayed. If a dog comes at them, they're going to get sprayed. A raccoon, a possum, anything that's a threat to them is going to get sprayed. But things like owls, I think owls are their number one predator because owls have a poor sense of smell. That's like a perfect setup for the owl because they can eat these little guys and sometimes without even being sprayed, but even if they do get sprayed, they have a very poor sense of smell, so they really don't even care. The most famous thing about the skunk, obviously, is that they'll spray you with this disgusting and rancid smelling liquid. And they can spray this accurately for 10 feet. Look at how little this, he's like two feet long, and he can spray 10 feet accurately. 25 feet, not accurate. But think about that. Look at how little it is. And it can do that. And you've, you've probably smelled one in the car or something like that. Like if one got hit, you can smell it. But let me tell you, if you get sprayed by a skunk, it is so rancid. It is completely nauseating. So if you do see a wild skunk, don't go up and grab it. Could you? Yes. They're very slow and lethargic. Is it a good idea? No, it is a terrible idea, and you never want to run up and grab a skunk. Yeah, he's so cute, I want it. Uh, well, Tink, I think it's about time for your nap. You've been getting so much exercise. You've just been like a treadmill. I've been bringing you back, and you've been running. That's right. So she's going to take a nap, and she's probably going to eat some more. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you did enjoy, definitely leave a like. And I will see you guys next time.